Welcome to the Lord's house. Today we're going to be celebrating those saints who have come before us and who have taught us and loved us into the kingdom of God. I ask that you stand up and join us this morning as we praise his name.
God on this Holy Saints Sunday. We come knowing that there is a resurrection. We come knowing that there is a new heaven and earth. We come knowing in the hope that comes from knowing Jesus. Be with us this morning as we celebrate those saints who have gone on before us, who have given us hope, who have shown us the promise of Jesus. Be with us in Jesus' name. And all the people say, Amen. Would you please greet the people to the right and to the left? And would you say good morning to them? And kids, come on down. Come on down. Good morning. Feeling better? Yes, absolutely. Good. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Okay, I want you guys to stand up now that you're sit you're sitting down. Sitting down. I want you to turn around and look up at the altar and tell me is there something up there that's different? What's up there? Candles. Why do you think those candles are up there? Because we want to play with fire? No. No? It's close to Veterans Day? It's close to Veterans Day? No. Because we want to set this place on fire. Because we want to set this place on fire. Yeah, but through the Holy Spirit, not through real fire. You can turn around and sit down. It is what they know as All Saints Day. Does anybody know what a saint is? No, you don't. Okay. Well, let me show you a couple of pictures of some saints. Do you know any of these people? No. You do. Who, who, who do you know? Mr. Juni. Who was he to you? Your grandpa. What did he teach you about Jesus? That Jesus loves you and that you're supposed to serve, right? You're supposed to serve. Do you see anybody in any of these pictures that you know? Yes. yes. Who's, who's right there? Who's that? Your great grandma. What did she teach you about Jesus? Hmm? Did she teach you about loving other people and about always having your house open for people and caring for them, huh? So we got some saints here, some pictures of some saints. See some of these people? Do you know any of these people? Yeah. You guys know these people, don't you? See these people? These are some of the saints. I didn't get all of them, but there's some of the saints that went on before us. They are the ones that were part of the foundation of this church. They have worked hard. They have been here. They have been people who have sung praises of God, who have poured into us the understanding of who Jesus is in a real life way. Do you think that these guys were saints? Yes. What makes a difference between somebody out on the street and somebody who is a saint? Got any ideas? What do you think? A saint tells about Jesus. A saint lives his life or her life for Jesus. A saint is someone who believes in Jesus. Yes. Bel that's even better. Not only believes in Jesus, but believes Jesus. When he hears God's voice, he does what God calls him to do, right? So as we see these saints, I want to ask, do you see any other saints in here in this room? Do you see any other saints in this room? You don't? Anybody out there believe in Jesus? Anybody ever done anything because Jesus told you to? Wow. Anybody care enough to spread the news of Jesus so people will live forever? Yeah. So guess what? They're all saints. So here's another question. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you love Jesus? 
Do you love other people? Do you share Jesus with other people? Yeah. So guess what? You're a saint too. You're a, I am. A, we're a saint in the making. We're a saint in the working. Because a saint lives out their life so that it will proclaim Jesus. So turn to somebody next to you and say, you're a saint. Then say, live up to it. Amen. Let us pray. Are you ready? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the saints who have gone before us. For their examples. For their love. For the way they followed Jesus. The way they taught us. Help us, Lord, to so live into that life that we too might be saints at the end of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Our scripture today is one that is, we call it the roll call of the saints. It's Hebrews 1, excuse me, Hebrews 11, 1 through 10. I invite you to read it with me on the screen. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead by faith, Enoch was taken up from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous. That is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. This is the word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, we come today as those who know in the past there have been many people who have shown us Jesus. We come as those who today are grieving for loved ones who have gone on to that greater place that you have built as the architect of the new heaven and earth. And we come as those who long to understand what it means to be a saint, to share a testimony, to know what faith is, and to abide fully in that faith. We come in thanksgiving and praise for the lives that have gone before us and for the life we still get to live in Jesus' name. We pray all these things through Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, and all the people say, Amen. 
It was on the 20th anniversary of Larry King Live that Larry King was being interviewed by Barbara Wawa. Now, Larry King had been someone who was uh, what they called the master interviewer. And so to have him interviewed by Barbara was kind of a monumental thing. And it was in that interview that she asked him some very pointed questions. And the first question is, what do you fear the most? And his answer was, death. And the second question was, well, do you believe in God? And he said, well, I don't know, I'm agnostic. It was in that that he showed his not only lack of faith, but he also showed where his heart lied in the midst of all the success that he was struggling with. Even in the midst of the height of his career, he found himself lost. He found himself wanting and needing. It is in times like this that we know the certain thing about God. That we know the saints remind us that there's something more. This world is not our home. We are only passing through. It is that understanding and assurance that after death there is something more. We have a hope and we have a future. You see, saints live by faith. And it is in that faith that they know that there are many things that are important, but the most is their relationship with Jesus Christ. The writer of Hebrews defines several people who had a faith in God. They knew what they hoped for. They understood the assurance. They understood what it meant to see the future, not to live in the present. They knew what it meant to be called forward in faith. They knew that they could trust in God. And it was in that trusting that they knew they could implicitly trust that God would save them. One of the favorite of my Old Testaments is Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Even though they were in a world that was pushing them towards conforming to its ideologies, they chose God instead. They chose to stand up against King Nebuchadnezzar and his worldly image and without hesitation, they chose God and faced the fiery furnace. And of course, God delivered them. As they were marching around in the furnace, there was God among them. And not one hair was singed on their bodies. That is faith. That is our foundation. So what is faith and this hope we need today? And how do we attain it? So one day, they will be lighting a candle for us because they will know that we have lived by faith. To begin, the nature of faith is something that's present. It's not something we go after. It is something that is innate in us. It is a belief that allows us to understand that God's promises and God's word is true. It is something that allows us to stand and live our life in a way that faces all things, not just in the physical, but in the emotional, in the spiritual, because we know that God is God and we are gods. Just as our physical sight in this sense gives us evidence of a material world, that faith gives us the understanding and the assurance of our spiritual salvation. Faith is needed in a world that is so crazy. Can I have an amen? It is something that helps us to see when we cannot see. It's something that helps us to step into places that we are afraid to go because God goes before us, surrounds us, upholds us, and leads us. This is what the ancients were commended for. These elders or forefathers of our faith that went before us understood and they stood on that foundation. These historical figures not only show us examples, they also encourage us as we press on 
towards the goal heavenward in Christ Jesus. This chapter is one that proceeds to give us an honor roll. Now, we can't go through all of them. Because if we went through all of them, we'd be here three hours, five hours, maybe even longer. As we lifted up the saints that went before. So we're only going to be looking at four. The first is Abel. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. Have you ever wondered why Abel's offering was accepted and Cain's was not? Has that been a puzzle to you for years? By faith he's commended as righteous because God spoke well of his offerings. Because God should just accept any offering, shouldn't he? Ha! Ah. The difference between the sacrifices of Cain and Abel, which you can read more extensively in Genesis 4, 3 through 5, was not because one brought an animal and one brought a vegetable. One was not a vegan and one was not a carnivorous being. The difference came in the faith. It said by faith he brought. So this is where we see God not only looks at the heart of the giver, but the intent of the giver. Do you remember the widow's mite who only gave two and she gave more than all others? The intent of the giver is to give all that they have. In Genesis 4, 3 through 5, it says that Cain brought some fruits of the soil. But Abel brought the firstborn from the flock. Ah, we're getting at something here. The Lord looked with favor at Abel's offering because he came and generously offered the very first that he had. Not knowing what would come after. In faith, he offered the very first, which was to show the productivity of the flock would rest on this one. He was willing to give all the first fruits of what he had. So, does God accept all offerings equal? No. He looks at the heart and the intent of the giver. That's why we're called to give our first fruits. The first from our paycheck. The first from the gifts that we have. We are called to give God that, not the leftovers. If you've ever seen the video where there's a pizza that God brings and the server goes around and serves everybody and God's at the table and there was none left over so God didn't get a pizza pizza, we begin to see that many times that's how we live our life. We give God the leftovers. We give God what is left. Because we know Abel was right with God because he put God first, he wanted God to always be first. His offering was a demonstration of faith. He did not know what would come after, but he was willing to sacrifice all for God. Because of that, his faith, even though he is dead, still sings into history. This reminds us that faith is not necessarily rewarded in earth, but our testimony will continue if it's faithful. Just like the saints who went before us. I remember the testimony of Junie as he talked about that struggle with cancer. I remember how he said, my life is to be lived out in faith for my God. He knew that. Even to the end, he knew that. Are you a saint that lives their life putting God first? Do you give God the first of all you have so that you can be right with God? Will you, by your example, be sure to ring out faith in the future? Will your children know that they know because of your witness? Will your grandchildren know that they know because of your witness? What will future generations say about you? The second example is Enoch. Now, I love Enoch because I don't like pain. Let me explain. In the Jewish faith, Enoch was an apocalyptic figure. The scripture says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life, so he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. 
Now, the phrase taken away means that he did not experience death. He did not have that last grasp of <gasps> that so often we struggle with as human beings. He was one who, like Elijah, was taken up into heaven and did not experience that pain. He could no longer be found because God had removed him from this earth and took him on to glory. Now, I don't know about you, but that's the way I want to go. I've already put my order in. I told God I want to be sleeping and I want you to take me and I don't want any pain. I don't know if he'll give it to me. They say pain refines. See, I might have to struggle. Lord, in your mercy. In contrast to his corrupt generation, Enoch walked with God. So in the end, there was no interruption of his communion with God. As a matter of fact, death merely took him near into God's presence as he was birthed into the heavenly realms. I don't know if any of your loved ones saw Jesus talk to the beloveds that had gone on before them. I believe that's what Enoch experienced as he allowed God to take him on to glory without any broken communion. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You see, Enoch understood a relationship with God was the most important thing in his life. He sought to please God. He sought to be in a relationship that was sweet and had a deep conviction of that communion. And because of that, God gave him what he so sought after. Beloved, are you a saint? Do you know God exists and do you earnestly have an intimate relationship with him? Do you believe he has your good in mind? Do you want to experience not death, but immediate resurrection? I'm there. Our next saint example is Noah. Now everybody knows Noah, right? You know the story of Noah. You know that by faith, when he was warned, he, was, he built an ark so that people could be saved. And animals. By the time Noah comes on the scene, the world is so wicked that God wants to just destroy it all. He is fed up with people and what they're doing. And he comes and he tells Noah the purpose of his visit. And he tells him that he wants him to be the one, the one that walks by faith, so that he might help him to save a remnant. It's hard to be the remnant. It's easy to go with the flow. It says they were partying and having a good old time on earth when the flood and rain started. With reverence and obedience, Noah took God at his word. Even more than Abel and Enoch, we see a man who staked everything on this. You need to understand that this cost him a lot. It wasn't because his family had been shipbuilders. As a matter of fact, to be honest with you, it had never rained and there had never been a flood up to this point. So what God was saying logically to him was nonsense. And yet in faith, he chooses to follow God's lead. God told him exactly how to build that ark. He told him what to do and who to put in it. And because of that, he was known as one who was righteous. Righteous. But there's an important fact that we need to remember. Why was he righteous? One, because he was right with God. And two, because he listened You see, so often we hear God's voice, but we don't really listen. So often we get that nudge, but we don't obey. one, One of the things I know about saints is that they not only hear God's voice, but they obey. As they follow that, their life shines brightly. It says that his his particular life, not because he was self-righteous, not because he was holier than thou, but because he was obeying God and doing what was faithful 
shined on others' life and passed judgment as it shined, allowing others to see their sin. It says in 1 John, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the love of Jesus holds us together. But if we walk in the light and we lie, it shows our sin. May our lives of faith be so bright that others see, repent, and are set free as they call to walk with God. Noah's godly life was a powerful contrast to his wicked contemporaries. He was one who stood firm, and because of that, he was the heir and possessor of a future life. This is what these saints knew. They knew that there was more than this world. They knew that there was something greater, and it is that greater that he lived his life for. Noah was right with God because he took God his word, he obeyed, he believed, he acted on it. Beloved, are you a saint like Noah? When you hear God's voice, do you do what he calls you to do? Do you want to be one of the heirs? Do you want to join those who've gone on before us? The final saint we see is Abraham. Father Abraham, everybody, every Jew wanted to be a part of the heritage of Father Abraham. They saw him as the great patriarch. They saw him who was one who was faithful. It says, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place that he would receive later as inheritance, went even though he didn't know where he was going. Now, how many of you have a GPS? How many of you, before you get going, program your GPS? Yeah, let's be real. How many of you just get in the car and start driving? Oh, I like you. <laughs> Free and crazy, not having to know where you go. We're not real comfortable with that sometimes. And in addition to going, we also want to know what we're going to get when we get there. Now, I have to be honest. I'd like to be you guys, but I'm more you guys. I like to know where I'm going. I like to know what's on the other end. You see, Abraham had no idea what God was going to do. A.W. Tozer says, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible, that are willing to risk. What a pity that we plan the things and do only the things that we know we can do. What are we missing by living this cautious life that knows what the outcome is going to be? What are we doing as we are Christians? I think as Christians we need to have a little bit of that reckless willingness to adventure in God. We need to be willing to step in the places that are unknown when God calls us because that truly is relying on faith. What good is it if we know where we're going and we have control over it if it's not God leading? Oh. Abraham believed God and obeyed implicitly even though he could not tangibly see and rely on, because he knew something else. He knew by faith that it was not the soil that his feet were going to be standing on that was important. He knew by faith that it was the God rock he was standing on that was important. You see, this world is not our home. We're only passing through. And our true home is in God. It's not in the house you live in. It's not in the soil you walk on. Your true home is in your faith. It is this faith that these saints taught us about. They knew that this world was not their home. And they were only passing through. And today, because of their faith, they are in glory a place I want to meet him in again. Can I have an amen? Amen. As we come today and we share what we call the All Saints Communion, we come as those who understand that this communion is something special. 
It's a time when we lift up the names of the saints that went before us. Because our understanding of communion is this is not only what is present with us, but it's all those who have gone on before us. When we come and we take communion, we are taking it with the saints that have already gone on and are in glory. So let us share together this sacrament of Holy Communion. Would you put that slide up for me, Bob, please? I invite you now as we do the invitation. Thank you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. I invite you to stand as we confess our sins. Let us read aloud. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Dearly beloved, hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We come before the mountains we were brought forth, and you form the earth from everlasting to everlasting. You alone are God. You created light out of our darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, sharing together, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. On the night in which the Lord Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. in union with Christ offering for us as our life proclaims that mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, O God, and make these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his precious blood. Today we renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we now name before you. Would Ashley please come and ring the bell, and Sharon, would you please come as we read the names of the saints?
Today we remember Lucy Lou S. Forrest. Today we remember Robert M. Jordan, Jr. Today we remember Deanna Williams Hastings. Today we remember John Tommy Thomas Tom Trantham. Today we remember Mary Jack Evans Henley. Today we remember Margaret Lee Ensley Watkins. Today we remember William Billy King Hunt. Today we remember Estridge W. Juni Page. Today, we remember Joseph M. Cauley, Sr. Today, we remember Faye Holloway Trantham. Today, we remember Harvey L. Brown, Sr. Today, we remember Dennis Gordon Page. Today, we remember Jason Andrew Hachesky. Today, we remember George Ensley, Jr. Today, we remember Robert Bob Jr. Ensley, Jr. Today, we remember Ronald Ronnie Lee Diggs, Sr. Today, we remember Johnny G. Johnny Gibbons, Sr. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run, dear Lord, with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in that final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet together. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church. For all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. And all the people say, Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is now time for us to partake of the sacrament of communion. I'd like to invite Vernon to come forward. We are going to be sharing with communion cups. You may kneel at the rail or take them back. That's your choice. Wherever you feel most comfortable and at home with God. As you come, we invite you to share in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup with the saints that have gone on before us. Would you please come as the Spirit leads you?
If you are online, we invite you to join us today as we partake of the sacrament. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of our Lord and those who've gone before us. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He died for you that you might have life. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of us. In his life, he not only gave, but it was in the lives of others that we have seen the saints that have gone before us. And it's in their name, especially the name of Jesus, that we pray. And all the people say, Amen. Father, we give you thanks for this holy mystery and the way that you have formed our lives, the way that you have changed us because of the saints that have gone before us. Continue to fold and mold us into the image of Jesus, your Son. We thank you for the holy privilege, not only of knowing these saints, but being called forward to be one. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray, and all the people say, Amen. I do have a few announcements for you that I want to share with you. I just want to thank Nancy, in memory of Dawn, for the flowers. They are beautiful this morning. Thank you. Uh, we do need ushers at the 845 service. I got one couple that said they could help, but we need one more couple or two more people who are willing to be a part of that ministry um, so that we can have each, each week covered in the month. And we invite you to be a part of that. If you would like to do that, please let me know. And we will uh, gladly put you to work and we'll even train you. Uh, there are three Bible study offerings. You can see two are Advent and the, they are through the ladies. One is the Cradle, Cross, and Crown. And the other one is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please read those and make sure that's a part of your Advent understanding. The men's Bible study just started a new one. Ten reasons why it's better to have the Holy Spirit. Now, I know it's going to be good because I heard them talking on Wednesday night and they were starting to get into some really deep discussions. We're in trouble. We're in trouble, church. Let it, let it pour. Let it pour. Um, also... Uh, out in the commons area, we've got two things going on. We have got Thanksgiving service on the 20th, and that's going to be followed up by a pie social. And Jane, would you please raise your hand? We've got a sign-up sheet out there. Jane's going to coordinate that. She might be voluntolding some of you to help her get that ready. So if you are, that will be after the 20th, the service that we've got. It's an ecumenical service, and the choirs will be joining together, and it'll be a fun time. We also have uh, out there Advent lighting candle sign-up. Uh, one of the traditions that we have in this church is during Advent, the Sundays of Advent, which means we're looking forward to Christ, Advent. Uh, we light the candle and we invite individuals, families, uh, groups of people. We've had Bible study groups. We've had individuals do it. But we invite you to come and be a part of that. If you would like to sign up, for one of the services, we have 845, all four Sundays of Advent. We have Christmas Eve at 4 and 11 p.m. And we also have, um, I'm missing something. What am I missing? Lord, in your mercy, it's on the board. Take a look at it. Okay. Those are all the announcements I think I have, except for our turkeys up here. This is the last week to get food for feathers. Uh, please make sure that you take two and three feathers as you walk out and bring back the food. We now have the refrigerator open. So if you are somebody who have al has already gotten uh, butter and celery and all those things, you can bring them in now. Um, just make sure you attach your feather to it so we know that it's for that. Um, and if you would like to donate money towards that instead of going shopping, just do so. Make sure you put on the little memo of your check that this is for food for feathers. We're trying to minister to 25 families this year. Uh, 
we have noticed an increase in the need in the little free food pantry. I think you're feeling that almost every day, aren't you? Yes. yes. Just about every day. So um, there, with, with inflation and with all the things that are going on in our community, uh, there's a lot of people who need. So if you would like to give, we'd greatly appreciate it. Those are all the announcements I have. Is there any more from the body of Christ? No more? Would you please stand and let us share together our closing song? Oh, when the saints go marching in, go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. And when the sun begins to shine. beloved as you go forth this day know that one day will be that day and I pray that you know Jesus and you get to fly away to that glorious heavenly after those saints sacrifice for you go forth and sacrifice for the next generation in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all the people say amen